Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Battle Brothers Me Cornus Knight as we get back into the campaign. And, uh, we'll worry. Yes. Yes, it's just trying to end the Civil War. Um, I'm always of mixed minds about doing. Yeah, that's fine. About doing, um,. The events, like the crisis events, and I'm going to explain to to this one of the reasons I have. One of the problems I have with this game, there's not many of them. I have, a, but there are a couple that I have issues with. Is that um, the game? The game picks a lot of stuff for medieval mercenary quite well, like um, the money and various. But like it's a realistic depiction of how. To a certain extent, how like medieval mercenary companies sort of work to a greater or lesser extent. Um, but one of the issues I do take with it is that when it comes to dealing with the crisis events, it really is in favour of the AI, um, like a large amount of the time. Um, for example, like in the human facts, in the human like um, crises, like the civil war and the holy wars. Um, like, you'll be told to defend the location. Like, they'll give you a mission, like, hold this location. And you're like, oh, okay, fine. It'll be like holding a settlement against multiple waves of invaders. And so it means that you have a little bit of time to heal up, you have a little bit of time to repair your gear. But they don't do that. What they do is that you basically will have a fight, and then almost straight away you'll have another pop-up saying, oh, the enemy reinforcements are here. And it's like, oh, okay, so do I have any time to... Um, switch out my equipment, do I have any any time at all? And it's like, nope. Like, you can't literally even open up your inventory screen to take backup armors onto people. And it's and that's one of the things I find really frustrating, is that the game, the game to give benefits to the AI will hamstrung the player. Uh, travel safely, old man. Um, like the, the game will hamstrung the player just so that you're at a disadvantage. And that's one of the things I really dislike. For example, um, I have been in fights in this game where I've absolutely massacred, like I've had events where I'm like, oh yeah, you've completely massacred the vanguard. Like you've killed everybody in the vanguard of an attacking enemy force and their reinforcement turns up and you think, oh, maybe that will damage their morale or something because they turn up and they find like half their buddies are dead. That will obviously have an impact. And it's like, nope. They come in with full morale and a bunch of other things and you're standing there with your troops absolutely knackered and worn out and you're just you're just basically open for demolition at that point like it's not even funny how quickly the enemies in this game can tear through you and um it's one of the things i dislike about the, about this game peasants are, are badgering me again they said goblins uh, no that amount of money for that kind of job is not worth it Nearly two grand for a tool, two skull job. Yeah, you're basically looking at a very nasty goblin. Two-handed hammer. I'd love to get something like one of these. I mean, to be honest, having something like that axe as well would be lovely. Um... Dane axes are really nice to have. I might invest actually. How much is that? Uh, is it in the marketplace? Please tell me they have something decent in the. Nope. Nothing decent in the marketplace. Besides food, of course. Um. Oi, that's the issue, isn't it? I mean, it's cheaper than if I was going to buy it in a settlement. Um, this is really good against armor. That's even better against armor. But we can hit chart range of, of, of up to two tiles. The thing is, these two things do do, 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 do two very different things. 
This one is very effective against armor, but it's point blank range, and this is a little bit less effective against armor. Um, but it has. It's, they're both really good. I might actually grab both of them, to be honest. I know it will curtail my money supply, but at this point, I really need to upgrade his equipment. Um. Because this is really good for smashing through armor. And this is. No, well, basically, this attack, even if it hits normally, is great for smashing through armor. Um, compared to this one here, which is that if we hit, it's 90, 60 to 90 hit points and 40, up to 45% 45 that, 45 that ignores armor. And we're also doing a 90 to 135 against armor and have a 100% chance to stagger on a hit. If we give him this, this can also, the stack can also destroy shields, but eh. Um, if we also give him, if we give him this, um, this is just much better at destroying armors. You can have that axe because this is very, very good. Um, yeah. Also, uh, minus fifteen percent chance to hit target directly adjacent because the weapon is too unwieldy. Uh, I always found that rather stupid with Dane axe. That was never actually historically true. Um, you could use them over a shield wall and stuff, but people used to use them as a main weapon, so I always found it very odd that they made it like that. I suppose it was to curtail the nature of the weapons in some regard. Right, we are low on money now, though. Uh, let's go and see if there's any work down in these directions. Yeah. Um, Civil War events. I'm going to be rightly honest with you. I want to show off the... I want to show off the um, the 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 crusade, the religious war stuff, but as a first level crisis, it's not that possible. I have in my spare time, I have played some of it, some of the holy war stuff, and my opinion is that you need to have um, a higher level party than I currently have. You need to have like. You basically all you guys need to have relatively. You, they all need to be like level, probably like level six at least, um, and they all need to have relatively decent gear because even the easy missions they chuck a lot of stuff at you, and the game cheats, uh, it, which is something I always found extremely frustrating about this game is the is the matter of how the game basically cheats the player. Um, it's never it was never something that I liked about this game. Right, escort the three days to the northeast. So we'll take the caravan escort. Um, because, as I said, one of the ways the game gets around crises, like major crises like civil wars and the uh, orc invasion and stuff, the orc invasions and the undead aren't so bad in my experience. Uh, Yeah, I'm not you. Not in the market to transport against Bannerman. Yeah. Wait, they're angry at me. For what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go to like. Am I at war with these guys now? Or is it just with the? Ha no, it's just with the settlement. Do they honestly think I was going to protect them against a major faction because they stole stuff from them? You're out of your mind. It's annoying that I managed to anger them. Like, oh, you failed to protect the caravan. It's like... Yeah, but you stole the goods from a major house and then tried to pass them off as your own. And you expect me to stand there and fight you? Like, oh yeah, I know I'm a merc, but I've got common sense, mate. Right. A little bit of food. 
Nothing really interesting. Anybody need to level up? Um, these two basically do, to be honest. Um, with the money we have left, I do need to take a job, though. Yeah, 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 so fine. Yeah, we'll take it. Three days... To the east, where are we going? It's just to the east. All the, all the way down there. Right, okay, so we have people trying... This is also one of the things that this game does, which can be frustrating, especially when you need cash. It can do stuff like, oh yeah, there's lots of treasure in this caravan. Blood in the ditches by the side of the road, blood across the roads, blood in the ditches, blood on the dead man's eyes. One poor farm of the sea seemingly happened upon by a bandit feast, but nothing of value he carried his carried mains in the ruins you stumbled upon. That can be a whole uh oh, bunch of spiders. That can be a whole host of stuff. Uh, that kind of event could be a whole host of stuff. You could have stuff like um, indications that there could be an undead uprising happening. I'd like to. One thing I would like to say, I will admit, is I'd love to see um, the crises events um, maybe overlap, like towards the end. Like for example, you could be in the middle of the civil war, and then the orc incursion happens because you're busy fighting the civil war. Right. Right, so that's good. That's happening there. I'm going to pull back and cover this approach. You're good. That's good. Pull him back to here. That's going on. Okay. Yeah, so much spider webs. Going after the horses as well. Really? Release the dogs. Going off to the caravan. Right. Come on. Get down here to support the caravan. Get 
Get rid of that one. Unleash the dogs as well to give us a bit more room to do stuff. Uh, took damage all over the place. They got reinforcements still coming. Destroyed most of them. Took care of that one. The amount that we've killed, we should have probably broken them the way now. Yeah, they're gonna run. I'd like to win this before we lost a dog, to be honest. Three of them left. Animals weren't hurt. Okay, we took a little bit of damage. Got some stuff, not a ton. Uh, he took some damage, so we'll switch him out for him. His damage is minimal. He leveled up. Okay. I'm going to grab some stamina, grab some of that. Neither of those are particularly useful. Um, so I'll grab some higher turn initiative. And with that, what are we trying to make this guy? Um... Can make him swords. Footwork is always nice. Um, I mean, we could go down the sword route and then give him both sword mastery and then crippling strike. Um, so, combined with that, it would give him like a massive bonus to basically inflict injury. Um, that could be nice, actually. I might do that. Have him with the sabers and have him inflict wounds. Wounds are very damaged. Like, are very. If you take wounds in this game, it's very, very easily easy to basically um, make the enemy just not be able to do a lot. Get that up. Get that up. Um, we've already boosted his morale. His morale, is, morale has never been very good. This guy. Um, what do we want to give him? Um. Battleforged reduces uh, damage taken is reduced by 
percent is equal to 5 percent of your current total armor value to your body and head could be useful well it is it is useful but he hasn't got great stamina so if, for example if i gave him a heavier helmet um for example this and then we looked at the perk okay it's just flat five percent okay um it's not affect damage from mental attacks or status effects yeah the higher basically the more heavy armor he's wearing the better his his rating is um we could get nimble um go for the head hitting the head of the target will give you a guaranteed hit uh, give as a Go for the head. Hitting the head of the target will give you a guaranteed hit to the head. Also, with your next attack, connecting with your attack or missing with your attack will reset it. Um, which is fine if you've got like something like a spear. That that combination with a two-handed spear, not like, well, I suppose this is a two-handed spear. Um, but the stamina requirement to use it is high. We don't get, we only get one attack a turn with it. So, um, I'd rather do Berserk, to be honest. Berserk is a very good combination. Um, for him, so he gets a kill, and then he can deliver another attack if he gets it, which is very powerful. Um, we'll give him that helmet, sure. His stamina's taking a beating, though. He's a bit hurt, but he's okay. Come on, let's keep going. Yeah, um, boy saying... One of the reasons I don't normally take the shoot, like the Civil War, or the well, after looking at it, I probably won't take the Holy War as a starting crisis either. Is that unless you really play the meta hard and grind quickly in the early game? Um, oh, we're being attacked by orcs. What do you mean I couldn't see what the eye saw them coming? Let's let's first try and get rid of the ones. The orcs, the ones we have to be initially worried about is the orcs with the axes. Um, the orc axes are very nasty. Um, okay, is there a bottleneck here? There's nine of them. Three. Yeah, so that's all their forces. We can actually do a bottlenecking if we wanted to. Um, you're going to have to basically get... Your stuff in order, my son, because this is going to be nasty. Okay. Um, get here. Get here. Okay. There's a reason for what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep them... I'm trying to keep them from sort of overwhelming this one corner. Right, so you can get up here straight away to support. You're okay. You can't do anything this turn. Okay, okay. Ouch. Ah! You want to do this then? Fine. Okay, you broke. You're stun locked, but we're just going to try and kill you, try and break the morale. Oh, he's two handing that? Oh. 
it, so... Target the ones who are trying to, the, the, the two. The, I'm trying, the reason I'm panicking is that there's a lot of orcs here that are two-handing their weapons, which means they become very dangerous. Okay, so there's a guy with an axe. No, there isn't a guy with an axe. Okay. I thought I could see an orc with an axe, and I got nervous. Okay, so he's in a bad state. Got to try and afflict as many penalties as possible on him. Still have not broken. I think they've tweaked the morale because I do not remember. I do not remember the enemies having so much resistance to morale before. It seems, seems to take a lot more to damage enemies and morale than it did in the earlier versions of the game. Ah, uh, that's nasty bleeding. Yeah, they've done something to the morale. The algorithm is different. Uh, run them down. Yeah. Right, it's over. We got level ups, but he got injured. Yeah, yeah, stats is full, but orc gear is never worth very much anyway. Okay, so he needs to get switched out. You're going to have to come in. You're battered up beyond belief. Okay. Get that up. Get that up. More morale. With that perk, we'll grab we'll grab that for early for early level power. Um, and that will be useful. You're hurt beyond belief, my friend. So you need to have that more morale, more stamina. Um, May specialist. Uh, what do we want to grab? Rotate is useful for pulling for people out of out of fights. I like a lot of my guys to have it because it just allows you to bypass, um, like just pull people out of tough situations, especially when they get surrounded. Um, so we'll grab rotate. These two are hurt. He's leveled up. That's good. Get his morale higher. His fatigue is. Okay, not great. Um, out of these two, I'll grab the increased to range defense. Okay, that's done. Now we're we'll 63. What do we want to have? What do we want to have at 63 for um, him as a weapon? We could. Grab one of these, but I would prefer to have something weapon-based. Personally, I like having I like having um, two spearmen. 
two dedicated spearman units on my flanks to put up spear wall to keep people from easily flanking us. So I think what I will do with him is I will give him the spearman trait. Um have him with that. Also with the spearman trait it means that even if he gets overwhelmed he can still have the spear wall up for that turn um, which is very useful which is very very useful um, ugh, he's cut up beyond belief how long is it going to take? a day, a day, a day right we're going to put a cut in here um, things are going not Great. Um, and we're still a long way from our objective. So we'll see what happens in the next episode, folks. I've been Cornus Knight. This has been Battle Brothers. And I'll see you all again next time. Goodbye.